Yeah, so then I realized that I wasn't at the polling booth, but I was at a McDonald's with the uh, the animated screens. Choose your own order. Last time I take acid on election day. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of the Nerd Soup Podcast. I am Bo Oliver Blue, back with the boys, Aaron and Teddy. How you guys doing today? Phenomenal. The boys. Really happy. The boys are back in town. The boys are back <laughs> Who in sings town? that? There's a tweet, actually, yesterday. It's like, uh, I can now confirm that 100% of the boys are back in town. <laughs> <laughs> okay, it was confirmed by sources. Yeah, sources. They're all back. Who sings that? Billy Joel. Is that Billy Joel? Probably. I Stats. feel like if you're from Long Island, Billy Joel, you have to like him, and I, I like, d- and I don't. If you're from Long Island, Billy Joel sings everything. If you don't know, you know who what's it crazy is. is that his name is William. You ever think about that? <laughs> William Joel. William it doesn't work as well. That's his father's name. William was my father. I'm <laughs> Billy. I'm pretty sure Billy's on his birth certificate. Uh, enough about that guy. Sing us a song. You're the piano man. So today we're talking about a couple of stories, big stories in the world of movies. Not too many, but it's quantity. No, it's quality. 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 Yeah, holy shit. That always bops me. Yeah, we got quality of story today. And I guess we'll just jump right into the first story. But before we do that, you can listen to us on SoundCloud at the Nerd Soup Podcast and iTunes as well. The Nerd Soup Podcast. So you're going to read another 10 minute ad. Oh, the skipper? first story that we have today is that it is announced that there's going to be a Breaking Bad movie developed, written, directed by Breaking Bad creator Vince Gilligan. Teddy, mm. go. That's the that's the best part of this whole thing, is that Vince Gilligan is directing it. Now there's no more guesses. Like, the biggest question is what happens next, and now we're finally getting it. Now it's not like he's co-writing it. It's not like someone's taking like his own or his, her own adaptation of it. We're getting the exact answer of what happened after Jesse escapes and Walter's laying there. Right, does Walter escape? I now knew you were going to go that he's way. not alive. I kn- he's dead. Walter got out. He's going to prison. You really think he's alive? Walter's going to prison. And he's going to escape from prison. Oh, Mark God. it. <laughs> Book it. <laughs> what the I'm hell? It, it sounded like the Liberty Bell. What's those guys? <laughs> he's acting like Walter White's some like, badass criminal. Like, yeah, he cooked the meth because he's a genius. He oh, have Walter the... White's not a badass criminal. You think he has he's the... not a badass criminal. You think say he has. It, he's... No, no. Say whoa, it. Whoa, whoa. In, the, in, okay, the, in the terms of him being able to escape from prison. <laughs> <laughs> he's got connections. He had like what, what was it? You no, know, like, he did shank like eight like, people. Yeah, he shanked like people? twelve people in two minutes. Yeah, but I don't know. That's one of the best scenes in the show. I think show it's gonna be Prison Break, Walter White edition. He's when uh, Bill Burr. <laughs> no, and, well, it's not like that. He's gonna get. He's gonna fucking get like the. Well, he's, he's the prison. dead. He's dead. So it's a. No, he's not. It's when a Bill point. Burr and Hewell are laying on the money, he's like Mexico. That's all I'm saying. And Bill Burr is like, he yeah. killed twelve people in two <laughs> minutes. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. So he's a he's a mastermind. I'm no, but he's also dead. Yeah, of course. You don't really think you're just doing this for a bit, right? No, I think he's alive. Yeah, he's so clearly dead. At not. the end of that show, he's laying on the floor. He took lifeless. one shot. Actually, no, I retract that. He probably could break out of prison. Thinking back on it, oh, are you kidding me? Well, I he's like he's like dying. He's I thought you know, he was doing a bit. He's got to. I don't, he's, he's dead. He's seen better days. He has. Cancer. He took one shot. He had cancer. Okay, though. the cops he died are coming to get cancer. him. The cops are coming to get him. You know what cops will what, do? What you know what prisons will do to keep you alive? They have the cure for cancer. You know what prisons will do to keep you alive? They can cure cancer. No, I don't know. They can oh. cure terminal Who knows? diseases. Who knows? I didn't know that they had this ability. Then I'll just go to prison if I ever find out that Who I have cancer. Who says the cancer killed him? I'm pretty sure the bullet in his fucking stomach killed him. Yeah, it's a combination of both. <laughs> anyway, uh, back to this news. I don't like it. I think, why not let the fucking... What is that face? <laughs> what, what, what are you, How what? do you not like it? Because it had such a perfect ending. Let it, let it die. Like Walter, let it die. It's... Uh, I like being able to imagine what Jesse did after that. I don't want to know. And Better Call Saul is different because it's basically a different character. Breaking Bad was a story of Jesse and Walt. And I think we got such a great conclusion to that that even if the movie's good, I feel like it's not necessary because it, Breaking Bad's perfect from start to finish. Why tamper with that? It's And what what's it going to be? What, Jesse? It's just the aftermath. There's no other it's like an epilogue. notes on it. Yeah, yeah it, and it's so story. perfectly, though. I don't I don't see the need to do this. I think doing that movie is the perfect thing to do. I I feel like most TV shows, TV series, would do another season. And that's yeah. what I, I'm not right. I'm not for we, that. We, I don't like that. We always talk about it, the useless sequel from, from already a perfect story and giving answers to things that were better left untold. 
And I don't know. I just feel like it kind of. I don't think it'll ever ruin Breaking Bad, even if, even if it's a dud. But I don't know. I just feel like it's there's no need for it. And Vince Gilligan is so creative, such a mastermind. Why not do something else? Stray away from the Breaking Bad series. Well, that's the thing. If Vince Gilligan wants to do this, I'm just gonna be there day one. <laughs> no, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Vince Gilligan. Exactly. Has, so don't make a fucking sequel. He has proved over the Thanks, last. Thanks, Teddy. He has no. proved over the. He has proved. He has proved. He has proved. He has. <laughs> what are you fucking oh, broken? Over the last ten years, that he's one of the best storytellers of this generation, if not of all time. I am wondering why he just keeps going back to this well. That he's got to have original ideas out there, but hey, maybe it's he wants, he has a good idea of what happened to Jesse after Breaking Bad, and I don't think it's going to diminish Breaking Bad because it is perfect from beginning to end, and if you don't like it, then you don't watch it. Give it a chance. If it doesn't add to the story, then just never watch it again in your life. You could still go back to those five seasons of Breaking Bad multiple times, as I have, and I think besides myself, you're the biggest Breaking Bad fan that I know, Teddy. But it, I, that's, to me, it's the number one show of all time. And Vince yeah. Gilligan is a master storyteller. He's one of the best working today. I'd rather him do original stuff. I thought that's what he was going to do after Better Call Saul. But if he's got an idea here that's going to add to the Jesse Pinkman arc and conclude it in a way that's still satisfying, because I do love the ambiguous ending, then I'm all on board. Would this satisfy you if maybe he wrote a book for The Aftermath? That would be actually, yeah. That's I'd probably I, prefer that. Yeah. I'd, it would be fine. I'd be on board with that, too. I mean, I'm on board with anything Breaking Bad. Like you just said, I'm a huge Breaking Bad It is Bad weird fan. that he keeps wanting to go back to this very contained universe with, I mean, the characters are great, and it's an interesting cast of characters, but do some. I'd prefer he do something original. It's kind of what people say with David Lynch with Twin Peaks Season 4. I'd rather him just do a different type of television show. And Vince Gilligan seems to have a very distinct style, even though there are... But the thing yeah, is, he has with so many ideas Saul. that he wants to get out. Even if there was a season four of Twin Peaks, you still wouldn't get any answers. <laughs> so it's it was just it, like this is giving you the answer to what we think happens to Jesse. And I'm not saying I hate it, but I don't feel the need for it. I think the reaction online has been a little bit kind of spoiled. People are like, oh, we don't need this. <laughs> if he wants to do it, then just let him do it. Don't hide behind the anonymous internet. Just talk to me like a man. So you're directing it towards me. Because I, I kind of just said the same fucking thing. And I, now you're acting like, oh, everyone on the internet's right being bratty. And you did a voice, and I don't appreciate it. Well, I, I don't know why you're so self-conscious. I mean, no, I'm very self-conscious. I think you work on your self-esteem here. I think I don't think this is about Breaking Bad. Don't get into my personal life. I am who I am. I think you're both getting too crazy right now. I think Fuck you. you both just simmer down. You always tell us to simmer down when it's not, you're not even that serious. <laughs> No, I don't. You always do that. When uh, we were doing uh, the question last week on the personalities that the movies that identify your personality. Yeah. You were like, you guys are just jumping the shark with this one. He You're... broke it down like it was a movie, the question. Like, he bro- like s- systematically broke down the question. <laughs> just... All the guy asked was, what were the three movies that define you? Just because some people take this podcast more seriously than others doesn't mean you have to. I thought I took it pretty serious. All right, so what was going to be your point? Uh, <laughs> the one negative thing I can say about this is that, like you said, it's going to give you answers to shit that you don't want. Like, but maybe, you want them. Oh, I do. I, I want these answers, but I give may not necessarily like the answers. But like with what happens next with Jesse, maybe he cleans up his act. I doubt it. Well, but I'd rather him not clean up his act. That's the thing. What type of story is this? Is it a crime? Was it yeah, exactly. What, was it, what was genre it, is this was it confirmed? Maybe it was a rehab. Was it confirmed that was a Breaking oh, Bad sequel? Again? <laughs> because the synopsis was a man in captivity tries to adjust. It's got to be Jesse. Something along those lines. It, I know, but it was it confirmed or that just sounds like confirmed, Jesse's situation. It's also under yeah, a working title called Green Briar or something like that. Green Seer. It's a Game of Thrones crossover. I forget. How long was he held captive? I can't remember. A couple weeks, right? Something like that. I don't think it was a couple of weeks. He looks pretty distraught. Was, yeah, I was gonna say, I mean, like, it wasn't that long. I mean, if it was, it was that long, then you could do like a thing where he was, has to readapt to time. society. I know. I don't think it was that that long, but I don't know. It's it could fuck you up in the head, though. Hey, yeah. there could be some flashbacks with Brian Cranston. Ooh, that could definitely happen. That's the only reason why he would be back. People are like, "Oh, is Brian Cranston rejoining?" I think he'd be in it. Yeah, even if it's for a five minute scene, like where it's something that we didn't see during that time like period. His wake or something. They all said after season five is that like it did end too soon, but it had to end. Like that was their quotes. Like you got to know when to cut it off. Like you said. Well, they, yeah, they weren't making like, Breaking Bad to make money. They were just telling a story. I mean, yeah. obviously they were making money, but it wasn't. Let's try to get this going six, seven, eight seasons. Mm-hmm. It's similar to Game of Thrones, even though it's running for eight, three more seasons than Breaking Bad did. But that's just the time they needed to tell the story. Then you look at something like Walking Dead. God. It's how long can we fucking milk this? <laughs> what a it's, joke it's that the same show scenario. is, man. New group, new town. 
everyone, I, every, <laughs> everyone people, I talk to. Even diehard fans are starting to turn on this show. Everyone says, like, my friend, he's like, uh, like, you still watch that? He's like, well, I invested so much time that I have to keep watching. And they have to spoil, which could have been, I don't know, I guess it leaked or they announced that the main guy was leaving. And they, they did that with, uh, what's the, uh, Shameless? I think an actor left that. Yeah, they, yeah, they yeah. They announced it. Um, what's her face? Emmy Rosen. Surprise your audience. Have it's something. Begging for guys to watch. Be- it's it's begging for people to watch. Oh, it's Rick's last episode. I have to watch. Make it surprising. Do something new at your show. Kill them off. Do something shocking. Like imagine, oh, Rob Stark. Oh, this is my last. This is my last episode nine, <laughs> guys. <laughs> Be ready for me to die. Well, that's because it's a show that doesn't have any direction. Yeah. There's no clear end in sight with The Walking Dead. It's not like a Rob Stark situation where that's so organic to the story. Rick leaving is just, I'm tired of this. <laughs> you can end actor. Walking Dead tomorrow if you wanted to. Just have zombies attack the whole clan. And that's well, that's it. the thing. I, I'm not familiar with the comic. I'm not familiar with the show. I watched the first two seasons, and then I gave it up because it was. I started was watching so late, and I knew that it wasn't going anywhere, so I just never stuck with it. I, I don't know. Does Kirkman, the comic is still going, right? Yeah. So I don't know if Kirkman has an ending in sight. He said that there's never going to be a cure. So that means to me it's a story kind of like Sopranos where it just ends one day. So if if it's still the highest rated show on AMC, why wouldn't they keep it going? It's just you just have to I know, I'm all about getting that money, but is. at least be creative and try to do something. It's well, just... it's tough when you get this many seasons in. Making you sick. That's what it is. Making you sick? I think no, you, could, you could still appreciate like the first four seasons because those are considered the best seasons of the show, right? I have yeah. no fucking clue. First four or five. I liked what I saw with the first two, but I, I had known so many spoilers and I knew it wasn't going anywhere, so I just, just gave it up. But you just have to take it for what it is at this point. Sad. And talk about movies. They're making movies now with Andrew Lincoln. What the hell is that? I don't know. <laughs> what is it? <laughs> they're making movies. I, I, are they sequels? It's Oh, they're making Walking Dead movies. Yeah, yeah. He's starring in a trilogy of Walking Dead movies. Like, are they going to start it from the beginning? Uh, who the fuck? You guys hear about that Shrek reboot? What? <laughs> yeah, they're rebooting that. Shrek. <laughs> what do you but, mean? But with the, with the same cast. You just broke some news to me just now. That's crazy, right? How do you reboot with like the that. same cast? I don't know, man. It's we're like li- an Elseworlds? Shrek's, Shrek's gold. I, I think we're Shrek li- 1 and 2? We are now living in, officially in the GTA timeline, where it's just we're living in a satire. Everything is just ridiculous now. That's a joke. I'm not believing that. Well, look it up. I'm going to. I'll send you a link. What's it you and not believe in him lately? I always believe him. You didn't believe him when uh, Suspiria was about a ballet No, that's group? that's me and Teddy's friendship. Is I tell him <laughs> something that's true. No way. And he never <laughs> believes me. And then he'll tell me something that's completely false, <laughs> but he swears that it's true. <laughs> Like, uh, what was it the other day? It's either that, no, it's either that, or I won't believe you, and then I'll come back like a week later and say something to you, and it's the same thing that you said to me. <laughs> yes, that's 100% true. I recommend a song to you, oh, and yeah. you'll never listen to it. You find it on your own and recommend it to me. <laughs> but when he texted us about Breaking Bad, I thought, oh, this is something that he, like, read on Facebook. I was praying to God that it wasn't false. I read you, it. When you replied like, back, I was, oh, my yeah. God, thank you. I read I, it, like, a 20 <laughs> minutes before Teddy said anything, but I didn't want to respond in a group chat, so like, I'm like, oh, I'm not staying up <laughs> I was, this. I was going to say... I can't believe that you didn't answer. Because like, I was going to say, really I don't like it. I was going to say, I'm not too too hot on it. And then uh, my phone has just been going off all night with you. Oh, you would have woke me right up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all right. So overall, you're not, are you excited for it? Like, like do you want to see it? Room temperature. Okay. I'm boiling. <laughs> you're boiling right now? Yeah. Ready to add some seasoning? Oh, yeah. Because excitement's something <laughs> that I wanted to happen, <laughs> actually happens, or I'm anticipating. This kind of just came out of nowhere. I'm like, oh, okay. I guess I'll see it. Well, that could mean that Better Call Saul is coming to an end because that's a show where if you watch it, it's got to end at least season six. I'm hoping it ends next season Mm -hmm. Uh, because that's full steam ahead towards Breaking Bad at this point. And Vince Gilligan is the man. I want to see him do something original. It's different too. It's kind of. But I'm I'm a Vince Gilligan stan. I'm going to watch anything that that guy does for the rest of his life. But it's uh, kind of similar, but a little different. Like uh, Deadwood, they're getting a movie, but that didn't have a proper ending. Right, right. So that I can makes s- sense. Yeah. Is that where Better Call Saul is right now? Are they starting to crash into the Breaking Bad universe, or is that where they're is that where they're headed? Or are they're they there definitely right now? got some through lines going. Because I haven't watched the season yet. Yeah, yeah. They're heading. They even had a scene that takes place in the Breaking Bad timeline wow. this season. Oh. It's um, when Saul's packing up his office to get out of town. Um, all right, let's move on to our next story today. It's not really a story Spoiler show for us, but uh, I mean, you know, Saul leaves town. He's got it once in a while, right? Yeah. Um, <laughs> the next story is about <laughs> Venom, 
and the box office success of Venom. It's already crossed 500 million worldwide. I think the official number is 544 million. The biggest wow. October opening of all time, right? Yeah, and it's done 200 million domestically. So Can it I have a is question absolutely before, killing it. Before we start this, quick question at uh, the box office. Why do people? Why is there a differentiation when people say domestic versus global box office? Shouldn't it just be the bottom line? That's what I would the think. total number. Yeah, well, I think it just because North American people like, oh, office. this movie made ninety million. This uh, well, that's a lot. Uh, this movie made forty five million dollars this weekend, and you click it's domestic. You know, maybe it made like sixty something. I would use use the bigger number, and it's a bit. I guess different openings, maybe. Yeah, you're just differentiating between what it made in America and what it made in all the other countries. So self centered. So self centered as American. Well, no, didn't. Well, I think like, it's because we didn't skyscraper like <laughs> well, absolutely it's, destroy. Overseas, that's the thing. There are certain movies like the Fast and Furious movies. They make two hundred million domestically, but then they make nine hundred million throughout the rest of the rest of the world. But then the Star Wars movie makes almost a billion domestically, and then it goes to China and it makes like forty million. So it's interesting to see what type of markets yeah, are no, taking to different. I get it. Yeah, that makes sense. I just I don't know. I just feel like yeah, if you're trying to differenti- differentiate between markets and oh, this the Western audience likes these movies more. It makes sense, but... Yeah, it's just interesting never... to kind of analyze who likes what. Well, I'm saying that that's why I think it did so good everywhere else. Is It's so mainstream. Right, but my question for you specifically is, do you think that Sony is going to take back the Spider-Man rights and pull him out of the MCU now because oh. of the success with Venom and try to integrate him into their universe? It's or a... do you think that deal stays in place? I hate when bad movies... It should stay in place. Look how good it did. I hate when bad movies get good box office numbers because the studios are like, oh, yeah, exactly. we should do a second Suicide Squad. We should do more Venom. <clears throat> Venom wasn't that great, uh, but it's all about money. Yeah, but audiences loved I, it. <laughs> Gotti, huh? <laughs> they can make a Gotti sequel. <laughs> That's yeah, a, but Gotti didn't make Venom money. Audiences loved it, though. Crit- critics put the... But uh, if audiences love it and it's making money, look hey, at Transformers. <laughs> critics put the hit out on Gotti, eh? They did put the hit out. They put the hit out <laughs> on Transformers like five times, and Transformers just kept making money until the recent one. And well, then, they, then they said, let's reboot it. Let's get in a good director here. Venom was... Venom, I, I think they would rather integrate Venom into the MCU. That would be what you should do, and that's what I think they should do 100%. Or if they could do like some sort of multi... It's such a weird situation because... It is, because I'm trying to think... A lot of people were hoping that Venom was going to suck and then Sony would just give the rights back to Spider-Man altogether yeah. and say, you, you just keep this now. It doesn't make sense. I guess they can make these Elseworld, Elseworld movies about these Spider-Man properties without incorporating Tom Holland, but I feel like their goal would be to incorporate him off and piggyback off the success of the Marvel movies at some point. Yeah, Venom's making money. It's not making Homecoming money. No. I think the thing is, though, Venom is on a $100 million budget. Homecoming was about like 250 I think, or $200 million. So Venom is just making its budget back five times, and it's making a nice little profit for them. So there's obviously going to be a sequel. When it first came out, everybody was like, oh, it's so cute that they think there's going to be a sequel with uh, Carnage. Um, but then it just made a shit ton of money, and it's like, oh, there's, there's going to be a sequel. <laughs> there might be a sequel. There's going to be a sequel with Carnage. <laughs> there were a lot of things in it that I thought That's could have they been should better. And, and Spider-Man. They, and they could ex- Okay. What did he say? I don't know. I, talk, I know. We were <laughs> both talking at the same time, but none of us gave in to the other. <laughs> I wasn't of, backing up. You two do that a lot, it's man. Kind of, it's kind of like, you know, two cats in the alley circling each other. <laughs> yeah. Just seeing who's, who's going to get first. Who's going to say yours, Sally? Uh, probably stupid anyway. All right, we'll I think move Mom's on. stupid. And that's why you, that's why you tapped me so good. Good <laughs> idea. I didn't hear you, but I just assumed that it was something. Uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> yep. I'm trying to think. I think I was just saying something like I liked parts of Venom and I think it could have been better and there's something to expand on in a sequel. So I'm not opposed to a sequel, but I kind of, yeah, I kind of hope they would just give in. <laughs> be like, here you go, Marvel. Just give us some, cut well, us in, let's give us some money and we'll be fine. Yeah, it's At the end of the day, weird... it's about money. So whatever makes sense for them financially is what Sony's going to do. What, what, so if that's the case, I think adding Venom into the MCU would would make the most money, no? It would de- give them a chance to make the most money? It depends on the split. Uh, I don't know the ins and outs of their arrangement. Venom had to have been. Venom, I don't know. There's got to be a stat. No, there's, there's no stat, but I want to know how well-perceived Venom it himself was how much, with the public. Yeah. Like, how much did Venom, how much did people like Venom? Like, was it enough to put him into the MCU? If that's the case, then fucking do it. Don't hold back. That's the thing with the, the deal, though. It's just so muddy. What do you think the percentage of people who actually thought Oh, Infinity War was great. 
ooh, another Marvel movie. Who wants to go see Venom? Yeah, most people. It's a casual. I, I don't think it's most. I feel like with Twitter and everything, people are more in tune with the MCU and, and the ins and outs. But the casual, like... The casual fan has no idea. Like, my brother wouldn't fucking... Yeah. He'd, he'd be like, oh, it's, it's another superhero. If Would your brother Marvel. go see Venom to go see Venom? Like, not want to see what happens I with the MCU? I think that's... Venom is just weirdly popular, right? For non... For the casual fan, people just love Venom, and it's. I think it just because he's like Spider Man. He's the darker version of Spider Man. Yeah. And better question: What percentage of people went from the Eminem song? I would say about probably lost a couple. Yeah, uh, so <laughs> yeah. It's, it's not. It's not a gain. It's not a bad song. It's a net loss. Venom. Ven- oh, it's a horror. Venom. Once your movie starts doing pop songs with uh, big rappers, it's efficient. Oh, fucking Kendrick on Black Panther. Yeah, but that's different. But. <laughs> When I saw when That's I saw a great got song Eminem a great for Black Panther, when I saw Eminem on the top of the Empire State Building rapping Venom, I'm like, "What the fuck is going on what here?" The he was spitting, you know. <laughs> he was spitting a lot of spittle. What else we got? Um, what else do we have here? Well, that's really it for the movie news. There's not really much. Taron Egerton not coming back for Kingsman. I mean, neither am I. <laughs> 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 We're both skipping that. <laughs> Uh, yeah, that's a good I, end right there. It's, right, just wrap the podcast. <laughs> well, we're gonna we're gonna talk about Bohemian Rhapsody, but you didn't see it yet. But I just had a quick question. I think Teddy can chime in on this too. Uh, obviously, you've seen Mama. The, yeah, good song. You've seen the trailers, and Ooh. apparently they incorporated the uh, voices of Freddie Mercury, uh, Freddie Mercury, Mercury Santa like, and Rami Malek. But it, it sounded a lot like Freddie Mercury. And I was just watching the uh, the, the Rocket Man trailer where it's Taron Egerton singing. And since we just talked to him, it kind of jogged back in my memory. What do you prefer? Especially with an iconic like Elton John and Freddie Mercury, do you prefer the actor actually singing or depends how good he is? A recording. Taron Egerton sounds like he's a good singer. Yeah, and, it always uh, depends on how good he is. He had an Instagram story the other day with Richard Madden. I think they did car- uh, carpool comedians and cars singing carpool karaoke. karaoke with coffee. You combine like four different shows. There's so many people in car shows at this point. Um, and he sang, and I was like, "Damn, I see you got the pipes." But I feel like with Freddie Mercury, you can't. It worked in Bohemian Rhapsody. Well, you need. It's yeah, Freddie. Who, who the hell are you going to get? But Elton John, he's fucking Elton John, too. Not like Freddie Mercury, though. That guy's Freddie Mercury ridiculous. sings in like 17 oh, no. different octaves. M- much better voice, but in I'm one, talking in about. One, in one verse, he'll fucking. <laughs> yeah. He'll hit the that man is a can. human instrument. Yeah. I'm I gotta see that movie. But Elton John's still a pretty big, you know. Yeah, but you can, get, you can get away with it. Yeah, okay. Yes, you're right. I just and it works so well in both. I know what you're saying too. Yeah, you're saying you prefer when they get the real voice. No, I think I think I agree with you. It was just a question I had it raised my mind when I you, when I brought up Taron Egerton because case by case. Yeah. There's that first scene in Bohemian Rhapsody where he tries out for the band, and that that was the test. Does this seem like he's actually singing? Mm-hmm. And there's a little bit of an uncanny valley, but you kind of get over it. Yeah, because he's just so good in the role. What was the whole, like, what's, like, the whole scenario with Queen? Like, did they not want to play him because of the way they sounded, and then they had that one-hit record? Is that what Queen was? No, Queen. No, I think at the time when that, the night at the opera, that album came out, and that song, Bohemian Rhapsody, it was very experimental. So people were reluctant to play it on the radio, and they go over that in the film. And the film, too, I guess we'll just get into it. There are a lot of scenes where you think, this is not how this happened. Well, that's one of my main criticisms. <laughs> it's very contrived. That's one of my main criticisms. Like Jersey Boys, too. Yeah, you could tell that a lot of it was made oh, for... Oh, yeah, Jersey Boys, yeah. I love Both of you, you now. Baby. <laughs> what the fuck Jersey Boys? Who cares? It's quiet all Who cares? Right? He's a big Jersey Boys fan. Yeah. yeah. Went to the play. It's a, funny, it's, it's a funny scene in uh, the other guys. What? When he gives them the Jersey Boys tickets. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I was thinking of the nice guys. <laughs> <laughs> so I, was I. I, conf- <laughs> I confuse those all the time. I was like, what is the Jersey Boys scene in the <laughs> nice guys? Uh, yeah, Bohemian Rhapsody. That was yeah, that was one of my main problems with the film. You could tell a lot of it was very contrived for cinema, where this didn't happen, and there was a lot of not like a lot of moments where a good movie doesn't need to be cheapened by it, and that's why I don't think it's a great movie. Like um, what was point? Oh, they'll never play this record. Where he's like he's like workshopping the beginning of Bohemian Rhapsody. He's like, yeah, I think this might work. Yeah, and everyone in the audience is like, it does work because it's, it's, <laughs> it's the big it's the song. Yeah, or the Mike he's Myers scene. He's like, they need a song that, you know, you can bump in your car and bang your head to. Yeah. Wait, oh, what, what was that? You didn't see the movie. Going into it would just be. <laughs> uh, no, but, I thought you referenced the movie. I want to know what movie you re- referenced. Wayne's World. Oh. And I don't mind. I, when, I've seen Wayne's World. No, no, but it's like the whole, the way that they set it up within the movie. It's like. I thought you said uh, Notorious when he made him make Juicy. <laughs> what? <laughs> Where the hell did you get Notorious from? When Diddy made. Yeah. 
No, I was talking about. That's what I thought you said. Oh, okay. We need no, a you, pop song for the radio. Yeah, I know. No, you said. I know what you're saying. Okay. He write this down. It's kind of like that, but uh, not really. <laughs> it was nice, man. <laughs> you want to just review Notorious? <laughs> but you could tell a lot of things didn't happen, and it was made for for the audience. And I don't mind when biopics or movies based on history take liberties, but this seemed a little bit too much. That they were trying to get a response from the audience or make something completely up just to be more cinematic. Yeah, it's by the numbers, but I thought the numbers Very were by the numbers. so good. I thought it was and really funny. Wait, wait, can I get mine? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh, you fucking cut me off. and I, mean, you guys I literally th- just let you finish. <laughs> yeah. We cut you off for a second. <laughs> and I was like, I like... <laughs> <laughs> No, no I like the numbers. I thought the script was funny. I thought the performances were great. I thought all the musical performances were good. And that's the thing. They made it cinematic, and I appreciated it because it was just good. If it came off as cheesy or lazy or it inauthentic. Did. A lot of times it did. I think there's a better movie to be had with Freddie Mercury's story specifically. And they focused on Freddie rather than the band. And that's kind of what is disappointing, is that he's the central focus, but they don't really get into the nitty-gritty of his life. No, yeah, they, I feel like they focus on the band too much. It's supposed to be... That was Sasha Baron Cohen's vision. You want to be more Freddie Mercury, get into... Apparently, they cut ties with him because he wasn't taking it seriously enough. Oh, they're probably... No, I read that they said, oh, they didn't want... They pictured him too much as a comedian. I feel like it was Queen's fault. They had way too much influence in this movie, I feel like. They made sure everyone got their due. I thought this focus should have been solely on Freddie. Cause but that's a different Queen, movie. Brian, who gives a shit about Brian May and whatever? But that's a different movie. Did Queen fact yeah, check Yeah, that's this a movie I shooting? wanted to see. Right, but I think critics are responding to this movie with the movie they wanted to see rather than the movie that it is. Because the movie that it was you could just But very that movie can still be made. Yeah, I just feel like there were so many great scenes and moments, especially when they're trying to figure out the songs, when the band is together and they're trying to workshop Bohemian Rhapsody and obviously the live performances were very well done. But I feel like the in-between, there wasn't enough there to really make what is should be an extraordinary story very basic. It should have yeah. been rated R, too. I think no, it's, it, a PG, it's literally a PG-13 retelling of Freddie Mercury's life, and life is not PG-13. Life is rated R, especially his life. Oh, my God. Because they don't get a into the dark. Life, dude. I mean, if you look, not even that, man. When you look at his final years, it's haunting Very, how this man. I was watching, like, a documentary, The Last Days of Freddie Mercury. He did not look yeah, great at no. the end. And it's at a time, too, when you can go into the AIDS epidemic and how society responded to that in the 1980s, and this is the most probably the most famous gay icon ever and just outwardly gay didn't hide it well it, it kind of but it was a different time and right I'm, it's a different time and it was kind of his rock star persona but everybody kind of knew and that's just not what this movie was and i didn't mind that because it was a feel-good story it was celebrating the music of queen which i'm not a huge fan of but also i can also make the argument that when they go into all the scenes about how they're making the music you can just listen to the music <laughs> Okay. Yeah. Or just watch I mean, their live performances. <laughs> like when they did the Live Aid thing at the end, you could just watch the regular one on YouTube. <laughs> that was great. I thought they were going to cut it short, and they let it they let it play out a decent amount of time. Yeah. I, I really appreciated that. Um, yeah, I just feel like it, it's literally like shot for shot. It's cool, but it's almost like um, James Franco's The Room. It's like you could just watch the original. <laughs> okay. Like you know, you did these things shot for shot. It's cool, I guess. Yeah, I mean. There's a lot of great things, but I think there were a lot of things that just didn't hit on all cylinders. And I think it could have been a really great movie, but I feel like it was handcuffed a little by the PG-13 restraints and the restraints, I think, because the band had a lot of input on this. I was, I was, and you could tell they tried to give each other their due. And they're very talented. They're one of the best bands of all time and made probably the single greatest rock song of all time. So they're not like slouches, but it's Freddie Mercury. He's, like you said, an icon. I wanted to ask you guys who, if this is like known, who fact checked this movie? Was did Queen fact check the movie? Because then it's like it's hard to, it's hard to say how authentic everything was then. Like yeah, when you could have fudged the numbers. I was listening you know? to another podcast oh, yeah. and they were saying the a Beatles, lot of fudging. The Be- Beatles movie written by Ringo Starr. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like the whole movie is John saying Ringo, you should really tell everyone what you did here. It's like ah uh, no, I don't want to take credit for this. Yeah, <laughs> you say it's you and McCartney. Yeah. uh... I mean, there's some things they, they flipped around, like the band didn't know he had AIDS that early on and stuff like that, but that was just to fit it in the contained story. 
Yeah. Because they wanted to end on a, one note on one part, so it made sense for them to switch that around. And little things like that don't bother me, but... I guess you can be upset because this is going to be the movie for the next decade, 20 years, that's going to be associated with Queen. And Rami Malek's performance was fantastic. I don't think they embarrassed themselves in any means. It's a, it's a good movie, but it's not as good as it could have been. And a lot of criticisms people have, I think, are valid. Yeah, I mean, I wish they would have gotten more into his origins, but it is kind of a Queen movie with the focus being on Freddie Mercury. If it's a Freddie Mercury movie, I was just, I thought that was then the movie. you can go into him growing up as somebody who his family migrated from India, having to deal with that kind of cultural difference. And it's interesting, the story that they didn't tell probably would have been the better movie I but f- i was still satisfied with the movie we got because i feel like a lot of times this, like people have um there are certain moments when people call him out for being uh from uh from india and on his sexuality and you see little hints of that but you never really get into how that affected him or how it really the whole culture around that at that time period they kind of strayed away from stuff like that they wanted to focus more on the music if you it was directed by a gay man too yeah but pg-13 it's also got some problems going on if you don't know that, then he he uh, left. He like there's a huge thing on set, right? Like he didn't finish the movie. He like left with like a week left, but he left because of the the reports coming out about him. Have you read about these things? I just know he left. No. He's been accused of hanging out with some wrong crowds, Kevin Spacey crowds. Okay. Oh man, <laughs> <laughs> oh no, not, that's not good. Yeah, <laughs> and he just got a big deal to direct a new movie. He's getting paid like ten million dollars. Brian Singer, X Men guy. Yeah, I know. I didn't know that. No shit. I know. I know he left the picture, and I, they, the red article I read just said there was like some set problems. Like he was always late and stuff. Yeah, set problems. <laughs> That's set, set problems problem. twelve years ago. Uh, if you don't know that Freddie is gay, like, is that portrayed as soon as like is that early on in the movie, or do you find that out like when the band? No, it's finds actually. Out? Uh, I don't know how accurate it is, but the way they portray it is. That relationship he has with the woman Mary, mm-hmm. that's a real person. And he apparently he left everything he owned to her. And that was an interesting, you always bring up the imitation game. Mm-hmm. That was another kind of relationship where they were married through their minds. And at first he has a girlfriend. But then he progressively starts to find out about himself that he's probably gay and that he likes men. Yeah. And she kind of knew before he did. And I wonder how true all of that is. Because when I saw him with the girlfriend, I was very confused. I had no idea this woman existed. So I thought, I, I like, yeah, I like, what's going on here? I like that part. It wasn't gay. I like that part of the story. <laughs> it was just, I think, everything outside of Freddie. I mean, because Rami Malek, like you said, he's excellent in here. And it's got to be the best performance of the year that I've seen. I've been on like a, a Queen binge, just like watching a lot of shit after this, like all the live performances. <laughs> That's all I watched too. Once I found out it's being made, interviews with the cast and all that kind of stuff. So like all my like recommended on YouTube is. Like, Every 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 time I check, it's like a new. I'm like, ooh, new Queen video, and I just, I just been watching it all the time. I want to break free. Oh my god, they, that's a fresh that's a hell of a video, video too. Yeah. <laughs> they were ripping that. I love that. <laughs> it's a line too, like criticizing American like hypocrisy because of that video, and it's great. But uh, it's apparently Freddie Mercury didn't want to wear a blonde wig because he was like, oh, I'll just look too ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> It's so funny because in the actual video, because I want to watch, it, like, oh, what, what got him? What got what got this band in America? So I watched a real video, and it's pretty good. It's a good video. It's, it's like it's a good song too. There's a lot of there were a couple of songs too. I'm like, that's that didn't really click for me. Like, oh, that's that's Queen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it's uh, what, what was the one? Ooh, you make me live. I was like, I that's swear, queen. same fucking thing. Yeah, same thing like, for me. It's queen. Okay, Queen. I see you. But, I don't know. It was queen. I always felt like I'm a big fan of Queen. I. I I like their music, but I always felt like uh, the hits, Bohemian Rhapsody, obviously a classic, but, you know. They're a hit band. We Will Rock You, We Are The Champions. Another I feel one like, bites the dust. Ooh, that's a oh, good like song. that bass line. Hell of a bass oh, line. Oh, fuck, dude. But, like, We Are The, we are the <laughs> Champions and uh, We Will Rock You, I feel like it kind of got mm. the short end mm. of the stick mm. because now it's used in every fucking sporting event and, all right, Ted, we know how it goes. Every, like, sporting event and commercial, it's kind of like a, like a gimmick song now. Well, I think that's why when they were announcing all the bands for Live Aid, I thought, damn, we don't, we just don't have bands like that anymore. And Queen, they made great live performance music. You don't have bands like that anymore. Like those songs are made to be performed live in an audience to yeah. have the audience interact, and you just don't get those type of bands anymore. It's that's what made them great, and I, I, it made me fascinated by Freddie Mercury. What a fascinating guy! Just an absolute musical genius, out of his mind. They say he has the, the best. They say he has like the best voice ever. 
Oh my god! It's got ever recorded? Yeah, say yeah. he, he wouldn't get. They do studies about it. He wouldn't get his teeth fixed because I think he had uh, additional like molars or whatever. Yeah. So he had like this overbite the space in yeah. his mouth, and he wouldn't him. fix it because he didn't want to affect his voice. They wow. say he. Well, I guess he thought or. I don't. I don't, I don't doubt that that would've. created like a better voice or. So they've done Harvard studies about the amount of octaves that he could hit. I think they confirmed it was three, which is five. That's. Like the fish that gets bigger every time you tell <laughs> <Okay>. a story. <laughs> I swore it was nine octaves. <laughs> yeah, but he he's just an incredible talent, and he's. I'm gonna start calling people darling now. Darling. <laughs> he does it. Talk about American actors nailing the English accent. Yeah, flawless. Well, Rami Malek, such a great uh, actor too. Mr. Robot is fantastic. Yeah, he's good. Perfect casting, great performance, and I like the movie overall. I'd probably give it a seven and a half out of ten. Okay. Is it recommended? That's what I would give. I would time. recommend it. I think it's a really yeah, fun I'm time. I'm going to see it anyway. But. Oh, it's a great time. It's a blast. And the crowd I was with, it's making it a killing at the box office. Yeah, but it should be. It's feel good. And I think that's an angle that I wouldn't have taken if I was a Hollywood director. I would want the nitty gritty, what I would want to see. But this worked for me. Well, it goes back to what you said, I guess, with the rated R. Maybe they were restricted with the PG-13. Definitely. They didn't need the R rating because that's not the story they yeah. wanted to tell. That's what I thought we were getting. It's a movie that's like I feel like parents can bring their kids to and be like, that's oh, yeah. one of the greatest of all time. Never do it. That's my child. That's who I grew up listening to. And okay. It's a great introduction to Queen. Yeah. I feel like anyone can go see it, have a good time with it. No, they know the songs. But I would say the problem is it relies on the fact that it is Queen and Frederick Mercury for it to be a good story. I feel like a good biopic, even you take away the... If he's still around. Oof. Oh, yeah. Well, a good, a good biopic, if you take away the the main character and the most popular figure in the story, it's still a good movie, you know, but hey, I liked it. I wonder how true it is. Play. Like if he's up there, like these motherfuckers are telling it all wrong. <laughs> <laughs> well, he nailed all the dance movements and stuff like that. Oh my God. On stage. All right, let's go to some fan questions here. You guys ready? Yeah. All right. We got the first question here from Daniel Yadgaroff. Hope I'm saying that right. Uh, my question has two parts. What is your favorite film show in the horror genre? Do you guys plan to review The Haunting of Hill House in the near future? All right, so I'll throw the first question to you guys. Favorite horror film or show? Horror film? What's my favorite horror film? I think we've answered this before on another podcast. We just kind of talked about our, I think it was our top five. Yeah, I think we were talking about our favorites. I'm not a big horror guy. Um, I just want to show. I need something to say. The Haunting of House Hill is fantastic. Uh, what horror shows are there? The Hill Haunting of House. Yeah. Um, American Horror Story. That's that's not bad. The first three seasons of that. Is what are great. some other big horror shows? Because like Twin TV. Peaks has some horror elements to it. Yeah, and I think it's the scary, the most unsettled I've ever been watching TV. But I don't think you can classify it as a sh- strictly horror. I think my favorite horror movie of all time is Possession. It's a 1981 film by a Polish director. Can't pronounce his name. I think he's Polish. Sam Neill's in it. And it has one of the best leading performances by a French actress. It's one of the best performances I've ever seen. Um, but horror show, I guess it would have to be Hill House because I can't really think of any horror television shows. Maybe Black Mirror is kind of horror. It's kind of got a lot of horror sci-fi elements to it. And like recently, two of my favorites yeah. are Hereditary and The Baba Duke. Baba Duke, Duke. Yeah. That wasn't bad. You know, I watched yeah. it on Netflix. I was pretty. I was good, right? Baba Duke. Yeah, I was put back by how like it Did wasn't, it wasn't see... terrible. You know, never... you surprise me sometimes. <laughs> really. I never actually. Did you ever watch uh, Kung Fury? Kung Fury. Yeah. No. I remember one time you're like, um, you said. Oh, like, is that what the what Nash always watched and no, his dad? Is that what that? No, but I, I'm not sure actually. But I remember one day in the group chat, you're like, I need a good movie to watch with Lane, and I said that. I guess you never picked it. <laughs> <laughs> Kung Fury I is said, the, greatest it's the greatest thirty minutes of all time. Well, you have. Oh, didn't know it's not what Nash watched. It's so good, man. It's so funny. But uh, I just try Sarah Cop. No, my favorite horror is probably The Conjuring. I'm gonna say one and two. Yeah, both great. Yeah, mm-hmm. or Annabelle. Terrific. Annabelle's good too. I haven't seen Annabelle. You know what else I really like too? Um, the Ouija Origin of Evil. Yeah, that's a good one. The second one, I thought was terrific. I think I reviewed it with Stu. We both gave it like a nine out of ten. I I, sh- I just looked up horror movies like to get like a reference quick, and Venom was in it. <laughs> was yeah, a horror film. It's got some horror elements, definitely. Yeah, I never. Not a big horror. I haven't really seen that many horror films. It's really crazy. I've seen like some old, like the old ones, like The Shining, Halloween, stuff like that. Do you consider recently? I, I don't never really seek them out because I always feel like they're gonna be trash unless I hear like, oh, this is great, like Hereditary. Yeah. The first trailer, I'm like, this is gonna be good, and everyone was saying how great it was. So I'm like, all right, I gotta see this. And when horror is done well, I absolutely love it. But I feel like there's too many terrible, terrible horror movies that I'm kind of like, oh, like well, even you liked. What was the one? People liked Happy Death Day, right? 
Oh yeah, I thought it was really good. It's campy. It's yeah, but it was entertaining. Is, I feel that, like that, that Happy Death Day is in the universe with Unfriended, right? Is that what it is? No, no. I think that's a different one. No. I know it's Blumhouse. I don't. I don't even think if I don't know if Unfriended is Blumhouse. But even like Unfriended, like I know what that movie's gonna be. I know it's gonna sneak. I'm not gonna see it. Well, horror's a, it's a very easy genre to make money off of. You oh, can make oh, yes. a ten million dollar terrible horror movie, and it's gonna make like ninety million, and you just would you consider Get Out of Horror? I yeah, feel like yeah, it's yeah, more definitely th- thrill. Okay, because that that's Jordan Peele doesn't. That's very good. It's like it's a documentary. Well, the I feel up. like the I feel like the tide of horror movies is shifting to like films now, and not so much slashes anymore. Like you don't see many slashes. Oh yeah, no, the slasher genre is dead, and I think there's a question coming up about that. Uh, f- do you feel classic horror is dead? This is from Mod Nayer, like the original Halloween, Nightmare on Elm Street movies oh, yeah. of that vein, or have we? Has it been changed, or have we changed as an audience? That's his question. I think we've changed as an audience. There's so many stuff you can't like. We said this on a Halloween video. You can't. Get by just having no. a guy going around killing people. <laughs> no, it can't happen. It's, it, it's, seen it too well, apparently, many times. Apparently, you can. <laughs> 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 if you look at the comment section on uh, our video. And thanks a lot for referencing the Rob Zombie Halloween. <laughs> I know. <laughs> 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 Once I said it, then then uh, I realized that they weren't like going back to like the other. Okay. I love how everybody though that we get some comments like, "Oh, it's these type of fans that they haven't even seen the terrible sequels that they all disregarded to make this sequel to the original." That like somehow make, that, that diminishes us. Yeah, that doesn't make that movie better. We lose better. credibility because we haven't that seen the sense. almighty 17 Halloween movies that they've made. The guy that goes around and kills everyone. To answer <laughs> this fan question, I have no interest in seeing the mediocre Halloween sequels. I just don't. If I'm going to sit back and watch a movie, I mean, I, I feel like... At least, people, well, if that's the argument that you didn't see these terrible sequels, you would know. You're basically saying this one's better because they're better than the terrible sequels. That's a biased opinion, and your opinion's invalidated. If you say one movie's better because the other ones are so bad and this was better than those, that doesn't make it somehow You're not judging it for it what is. it is. Yeah, so, yeah. But to answer the question, I think that we're being changed by the change in horror. The yeah. Hour of the Wolf by Ingmar Bergman. <laughs> <laughs> no, right? I mean, we're being changed by, hey, by actually, how the genre is changing. We're getting films now. We're not getting. How many anymore. Eisenstein films have you seen? I watch a <laughs> Japanese movie without you telling me to. So, props to me. No, but that's Ted, a, I, I think you make a good point. Yeah. No, you do. I'm sorry. I just had to. I think the audience is being changed by how the category of horror is being changed. Where in horror nowadays, you're getting more fleshed out characters, and the audience is caring more about your characters in the movie, not so much as, oh, he's gonna die. I, I can kill us, you know. Yeah, and I mean, Halloween is much better than say, like Paranormal Activity Four. Yeah. yeah. So I think it's a right. It just didn't work for me, but it's a step in the right direction. I really don't prefer movies where the main takeaway is, you know, Halloween. Oh, Mike Myers, Jason, Freddy. I feel like when that's your best character, and most well known character, and most developed character, you're kind of taken away from the, the main focus, which is supposed to be the victims. People are getting terrorized by this character you're supposed to care about and not want to die and want to succeed. But it's kind of like, oh, Halloween. I want to go see Mike Myers fucking kill some people you want to know how i'll answer that question too is we went to halloween thinking that we were gonna get a fleshed out character in michael myers right yeah exactly it's audience <laughs> expectations it's yeah. a good point all right so the next question here comes from pre which is your favorite not disney pixar animated movie and why i'm asking this to all my favorite youtubers we're in that category good looks thanks pre oh uh, that's easy for me it's spirited away by hayao miyazaki it's the best animated. Yeah. Yeah, again. <laughs> How many Miyazaki movies have you seen? Fucking somebody commenting and saying, oh, you must be the audience that Red Letter Media makes fun of. Because we didn't like Halloween? Yeah, because we didn't like Halloween. Like, well, you must be Marvel guys. Did Halloween do good in the box office? I haven't even yeah, looked. Yeah, it made a lot of money. Did it? Yeah, it made a killing. We can't not like a movie? Yeah. All, we don't like one movie, yeah. You know what? From the rest of the week, I'm only doing movies that are not in English. Stick to Game of Thrones. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It's like stick to sports. Stick to sports. <laughs> yeah. Stick to thrones, you bastards, you monkey. Uh, I, need, well, I need some... What was uh, the question again? I need some like examples. Favorite uh, non-Disney... Animated... An- Shrek, maybe? Okay. The vein of Shrek. DreamWorks. DreamWorks. Oh, DreamWorks got some hits. I think we got some hits, yeah. Kind of like the one we saw the other day, the Death of the Fireflies. Oh, yeah. Um, uh, some Wes Anderson, some Fantastic, Fantastic, Fantastic Mr. Fox. I was going to say that, and I was going to say uh, Isle of Dogs. I really like that movie. I kind of got like lost in the shuffle, I feel like. Yeah, Is Monsters, Inc.? Uh, Pixar. Pixar. Damn. <laughs> they got hits too, dude. They, yeah, yeah. Oh, well, Pixar, man. It's kind of weird because I lean more to the adult animation. Oh, I got mine. The children's. What was that one the other uh, couple years ago? Animalisa or whatever. <laughs> I got mine. Stop motion. Yeah. 
what what madagascar oh madagascar the first one is good you know what's good too over the hedge yeah yep. steve carell is the shark uh, squirrel oh shark, shark tail, tail. Yeah. <laughs> two shark tail references in a row what the hell is happening here don't make it a third how do you trip underwater how do you trip? <laughs> a lot of white fish can't do it uh this question here from robert perez another game of thrones question do you guys think that ned stark told his brother benjamin the truth about Jon snow i understand ned not telling his wife but I think he would have told Benjamin since he too deserved to know about the death of their sister Lyanna and Jon Snow. That's a good question. I like that. I don't think he did. I think I really think Ned told no one. Yeah, that's something. That's something he would do. <laughs> Just keep that to himself, where he should have told somebody. Uh, I don't know. It's kind of you can't ri- you can't risk that getting out. And I, I think he trusts Benjamin. It is a fun theory to think about, but I feel like it feels like that's not something Ned would do is to say something like that. I think if there is one person you're going to tell Benjamin who's in the Night's Watch, he has no role in the politics of Westeros anymore. I think people say, why didn't he just tell Catelyn so Catelyn wouldn't hate John?" I think he says that he understands why he didn't tell Catelyn, because Catelyn, if anything ever happened to her family, she would use that as a tool, exactly. as a weapon for it's the just, true-born Starks. And it's kind one of, more person knowing, too. It's a moot point, right, because yeah. it doesn't matter anymore. <laughs> And we'll never find out, so it's fun to theorize and things like that. Unless in the books take it a different direction. Uh, it's fun to think about, but I think Ned is very... He realized the, the significance of it and the consequences, seeing what happened in King's Landing. That's why he left and didn't speak to Robert after he saw the lengths that he would go to to eradicate the Targaryen family. So... Still one of my favorite shots from that first episode is when Robert and Ned are reunited and John's just standing there in the background. <laughs> And it's crazy to think that's Rhaegar's fucking son, like right there. And Ned's just... No one knows. No <laughs> one knows. It's so funny to think about. Not Nobody there knows except for Ned. It's just, it's awesome. It says how fucking, like, how important Ned is too, though. No, yeah. Like, if Ned lets that out, the entire fucking universe changes. Shit, you're talking to one night. I got one for you. <laughs> <laughs> well, I have a story to tell you. Like, he's so honorable, but he can't let someone have a better story than he has. So it just, <laughs> so he just progressively to gets pocket. to the point where this guy is like, well, I slayed a dragon. He's like, well, my bastard son's a Targaryen. Yeah. What? <laughs> you didn't hear it from me. <laughs> I'm just saying. I want to hear the story that made Ned tell his story. Uh, the next question here from Anthony Lucido, 42. Do you think that you guys could revisit Breaking Bad next? I feel like you guys are perfect for it. Just an idea since I feel like it's nowhere on YouTube. That's not. I mean, I'd I'd be down for good it. I, good idea, but it take a lot. Revisited for Game of Thrones is different too because there's so much going on in the show. But even that week to week, sometimes we feel ourselves repeating our yeah what I'm we said like, last week. Yeah, it's Breaking Bad would get ugly real fast. It's fun. Like, there's Walter. He's transforming again. Like episode two, <laughs> season two, episode six. It's kind of like yeah, there he is. <laughs> he's doing stuff he's he's good but he's also getting a little better i think a season that was the best a seasonal revisited man. would be a better idea yeah. and it would be a perfect lead up to the okay. new movie this gate got us another ten thousand subscribers what did you do today ted that was your idea <laughs> i think that was his idea and what's his name randall 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 all the great businessmen of all time took good ideas and, and stole them <laughs> and, <made him> better. <laughs> and took all the credit <laughs> I think thomas idea, edison though. Yeah, read a book. That's the best. Actually, that was by Anthony Lucido. Sorry. (laughs) Thomas Edison was taking everybody's ideas with Thomas Edison. He has his AC on and everything. (laughs) We haven't showered in a week. (laughs) We stink over here. (laughs) I don't even know if that's true. I think I heard one. Someone told me Thomas Edison didn't invent the light bulb. I just ran with it for the purpose of that joke. (laughs) Well, he used to hire a lot of inventors and then he would finance them. Like Tesla. Tesla was one of the people that he financed. Okay. So Edison was more like a, he was like a Jobs. He was the Steve Jobs of his time. Hell yeah. So um, the music. this last question from Randall Kupchak says, what are some limited, why are limited series so awesome and what new one would you like to see done? We've talked about this too, about how the limited series, I think it's that nice medium between television and movies where you get a limited series and it's like a 10 hour movie. Like Sharp yeah. Objects was legit like an eight hour film. Like Sherlock. Same directors, same writers, same story, just going through, and then that's it. So I think that's why you have so much potential with the limited series, so you can flesh out the characters more, but you also get the satisfaction of knowing that there is going to be an ending, and that's it. It's easier to obtain high-level actors that don't want to spend their time on a seven-year-long commitment. Mm -hmm. So Amy Adams, you come in, you do a a year and a very good story, and you're done with it. Uh, Same thing with, you know, Maniac. And I think that just adds to it. When you get high-level film actors on television for a short period of time, something they're fully committed in, I think it makes for 
And it has to be a good story for them to make that commitment too. They're not just going to go to TV for a limited series for any old story. It's got to be something that piques their interest and they think will end up being good. So I think it's that mix that really creates something special. Uh, yeah, what you both said. All right, that's our show. <laughs> you both answered it. That's another episode of the Nerd Soup Podcast. We ran a little long today, but I hope you guys enjoyed it. For Aaron, Teddy, I'm Bo. See ya. At Teddy Nerd Soup. Sneaking it in the beginning. I feel like, yeah. No one's it, listening I was anymore. just going to say yeah, that. I mean, I feel who's like listening no one... at this point besides us three? Oh, so hold on. Let's do a test. Uh, ask a question and, and see if they comment the answer, and we'll know that they, they were watching or tweet, it, tweet at you. What question? I don't know. Give I me an example. Handed it off to you. Give me an example. If you're listening at this point, just comment below, investigate 311 in oh. big capital letters, okay. and that's it. What's, All right. If that you're mean? listening, tweet me. Never seen Eric on that. I'm your favorite. No. When somebody runs on stage and it's like, investigate 311, <laughs> and they all just start dancing. <laughs> it's pretty funny. <laughs> if you're so All right, you know what? Just comment the Eric Andre show in big capital letters if you're listening at this or point. Or tweet me something funny. Yeah, that's not going to happen. <laughs>